As time went on and I stuck around for an hour or so, the crowd was extremely volatile and at times would jump into pitch battles. But at one point or another, people would move to the side and a group of kids would start freaking out in the middle of doing all these incredible gymnastic dancing. What McLaren saw was called hip-hop, energy in motion that you could not stop, demanding all of your imagination if you were to share in the celebration. Now, it wasn't enough to just be good. You had to be super bad, because when you hit that floor, your reputation was just about all you had. I think hip-hop is being in control of your body. That's the whole art of it, actually understanding that you're much bigger than you are. It's a demonstration of your prowess. If you haven't got a dime in your pocket, the one thing you can do on Madison Avenue is spin on your head and show all the white honkies moving out of the Chase Manhattan Bank on the lunchtime and say, well, hell, beat that. And if you can't, here's my cap. Give me a few dollars. But the story of hip-hop doesn't belong in New York, L.A., or London. That's wrong. The true story begins in devastation, bad housing, gang wars, and desperation. And the Bronx ghetto, or Planet Rock. Let's take a minute and turn back the clock. Howdy! Let's go! To the first hero of the hip-hop groove, the man who made the people move. From Jamaica, he came with a sense of rhythm, and what he brought to the Bronx was a sound system. Music he played made life work and made him a legend. Cool DJ Herc. When Cool Herc gave a party, everybody be there. A lot of people used to have fun. Big fun. That, that was a talk for the whole weekend, all the whole summer. Where did the party? I was partying with Cool Herc, man. He had a block party, you know, the tennis court disco, a lot of other things, too. That's about my records. Right over here. You know, but now, you know, it's, no more, it's not there no more. Called Sounds and Things. And this is a this would be a ballroom up here I used to play. Matter of fact, I play up there for the Transit Authority dinner one time. And, uh, Mario Cuomo was there before he become governor. Uh, basically, right here, a place called Galaxy 2000. And um, they had a big shootout here one time. Same time I played at Bronx River. I came back. I seen the canopy knocked down. The fire escape was let down. You know, and I knew something was wrong. But the, the Bronx is on an uplift. I'm very pleased to see a lot of places being real, you know, rehabilitated. But um, I think there's still more could be done. A whole lot. All those unforgettable promises from from the South Bronx, from the car that was came over, made out of iron, right? But I never left the Bronx, and I love the Bronx. I don't, I, I, don't want, I don't want to leave. What Herc did was throw down the sound of forgotten heroes like James Brown and separate the good stuff from the junk with the emphasis on a lot of funk. And in the middle of a funky sound, Kukla Rock, his rapper, would go to town. The music was hot, very loud, with participation to excite the crowd. Then Herc would drop a mighty blast with a golden oldie from Music Past. Um, Cedric, 1520. Over 10 years ago. Well, look at that medallion. What happened to that? Uh, it got stolen. 
I was like my bags like a show. Place was packed. How was it? It was pretty good. Everybody showed up, had a good time. Everybody put on their best that day. All of a sudden, this, I don't know, all of a sudden, um, if something happened, they just don't get into the party spirit no more, you know? I got injured. I got stabbed. Fatally stabbed up. And that just put a halt to the whole thing. I walked right into it. I mean, I just, I didn't know where the knife came from. I just literally walked into it. I, hit, I was hit four times. The last one pierced my hand. You know, went all the way through. It shouldn't happen. So, and that just um, draw me to the show, you know. And um, I just stopped. I stopped playing as far as, you know, accepting gear, but I wasn't, I wasn't out in the public eyes too much. Um, that was the rise of a lot of DJs, you know. You say, well, her wasn't on the scene, you know, this is our chance. And a lot of them dashed in and, and capitalized on it. DJs, 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 you know, and the music that they used to come to hear at my party was all over now. Herc is not a stepping stone, it's a horse that can't be rolled, and it's a bull that can't be stopped, and it's a disco I can't rock. I rock on. It could have been on uh, my obituary that this is the guy who started this, you know, and this was what he did. Though he may be a fallen hero, all will forever say that in the history of hip hop, he was its number one DJ. You see, Herc had started something that not even his enemies wanted to stop. Cool DJ Herc had launched the birth of a movement called hip hop. In the middle of Savage Skulls and on the top of the hill with the seven crowns, the gangs were in the Bronx and they were seriously getting down. It was little Vietnam where even the police watched out for raids and where the baddest of them all was a street gang known as the Black Spades. And from them emerged a boy who became the adopted father of the hip-hop generation, Azulu, Africa, Bombada. <laughs> 